very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lena Shapinskas. I come from DONS, Data Archiving and Network Services, based on the Netherlands. And I will be giving a presentation together with Joy Davidson from DCC, Digital Curation Center, in, based in the United Kingdom. I will be sharing a presentation. Just a moment, please. Can everyone see it? Yes, we can see it. Great. Well, the topic of today is want to learn how to be more fair, try fair aware. Uh, I'll be presenting a practical solution to making one's research data more fair. This presentation is also partly based on a previous presentation given at a Dutch event of addressing fair aware tool and providing some more background. Well, fair principles can mean different things to different people with different varying levels of understanding these principles. I think to be able to interpret these principles in the right way or the way that they are intended for, it's also important to understand what each of these principles actually mean in practice. There are a lot of tools uh, assessing different levels of fairness of data sets, but there are less tools assessing the level of awareness of people, of users. So in, within the FairSphere project, we have developed together with our partners FairWare tool. This tool has been developed for researchers and data stewards, but can be also used by anyone who uses data sets. Uh, the focus of fair aware tool is on educating and raising awareness about the fairness of data before depositing the data in a data repository. This uh, tool is based on a website, it's accessible online. The key characteristics are being practical. It promotes practical hands-on understanding of the fair principles and how they can facilitate potential reuse of data. Consisting of 10 self-assessment questions uh, this tool helps assess the level of awareness of a user. Uh, these questions were based on the fair sphere object metric specification, which have been covering most of the fair data principles. The other key aspect of this tool is it being educational. Uh, it educates users about fair principles and how these can be applied in practice. Uh, this is done by providing extra guidance and practical tips with each question. As I mentioned, it's also accessible, it's online. Uh, so you just need internet connection. And the other advantage of course, is that it can be used by anyone from different research and uh, domains and disciplines. Now I would like to uh, go through the questions of the self-assessment. As I mentioned, there are 10 uh, quite short questions addressing all of the fair principles. And uh, the first one is focusing on the fact that the data set should be assigned a persistent identifier known as PAD. Or this can be an example of a digital object identifier. The second question addresses discovery metadata. Well, this focuses on providing as much information to the metadata as possible. This helps people locate your data and increase the reuse and citations of data. The third question addresses the different formats that can be both readable by machines as well as humans. Well, if you deposit your data within a domain or discipline specific repository, it will likely be using common metadata standards. This means that this will conform to the standards that enable search and retrieval by users within your domain and potentially beyond your domain. Now let's look at the second principle of accessibility. This question, question four highlights the principle that a data set ideally should be accessible. Well, how to achieve that? In case of legitimate reasons, such as privacy protection or legal constraints, more restricted access levels can be chosen. In doing so, it assures the data is as open as possible and as closed as necessary. The angle of question five is on the long-term perspective. So it's about whether the metadata will be preserved, even if the data that it describes may no longer be available. If users use trustworthy data repositories, 
they will be guaranteed a minimum retention period for data. Now let's look at the interoperability. It's basically about uh, the fact that researchers use different sources to find different types of data for different purposes. It could also be the researchers carry over search strategies and search terminologies from one source to another when looking for other, other types of data, even if its resources do not use same terminology or vocabularies to describe data. Well, the tool that we have developed tells that semantic vocabularies are preferred since the content are then unambiguous and can be interpreted also automatically by machines. This in turn enhances data search and interoperability of data from different sources. Now, let's look at question seven, eight, nine, and 10 very briefly. Well, question seven addresses the provenance of information. This basically means how the data has been collected, how it has been manipulated, and how it has been documented. This is important because complete, extensive metadata plays a key role in communicating this information, but they're often not enough. Question eight addresses the specifications of community indoor standards. This is important in describing a metadata. In this question, additional information is provided where to find this community indoor standards. Question nine discusses the different formats that are preferably open formats that are used for data. And question 10 addresses the role of professional data curation and preservation over time. It also emphasizes the role trustworthy digital repositories play in providing support and taking responsibility of data with different levels of fairness. Uh, thank you very much. And I would like to pass on the word to Joy Davidson. That's great. Thanks very much, Lena. Um, I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes. I just wanted to kind of recap some of the things that FairAware is and clarify a few things about what it isn't. Uh, so first of all, just to, to reiterate, um, it's really a simple tool. I think uh, in looking at the last tool, it's very technical and very data oriented. This is very much just a tool that is it's simple. It's intended to be really simple and straightforward to use. And it's targeted directly towards researchers. So it's all about just trying to get their um, understanding about what FAIR means in a practical sense and to make them aware of what that means. So the tool is freely available online. People can come and take it and play around with it and reuse it in any way that they like. So we would encourage people to, to go ahead and do that. Um, I think the other thing to make clear is that we spent a lot of time, it looks very simple. It is just a set of 10 questions as Lena ran through, you got to see what is covered by the tool. Um, it seems very simple, but it took us a really long time actually to come up with a, those 10 questions to distill it down into something that we thought was informative but still efficient and something that wouldn't be a barrier to researchers coming to and thinking, you know, they, we didn't want to have anything that was too long, uh, but we thought these 10 questions were uh, realistic and it should take, you know, anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes to, to run through. So we were conscious of trying to design this in such a way that it, it would be quick and easy and efficient for researchers to, to do. I think the other thing to make you aware of is that it is intended to be used by the researchers directly. There is no intermediary required at this point. So you can point any researcher to the tool, they can run through the questions at their own pace. Um, and there's really no need for mediation. Um, whether you decide to use it in that way, we'll, we'll maybe see a little bit more um, over the course of the next couple of days. I think one thing to make clear is what the tool doesn't do and um, the tool does not give you a fair assessment of your data set. It's not intended to give you a score on whether your data set is fair or not. Um, but what we do, do recommend is that researchers, if they come to the tool, and, and the tool does say this when you read through the introductory text, it does suggest that you do actually think uh, about a particular data set that you're working with as you run through the questions. So either you know, a project that you're currently working on or a recent project, just so that you have some sort of a context as you run through the 10 questions. So that's just a, a recap of what the tool is and what it isn't. And I just wanted to move over to the next slide and I'll give you a brief introduction of um, what you get with each of these. Uh, so again, um, what you do get with the, the tool, you saw the questions that Lena's presented, but as you run through the questions, 
you get a simple yes or no answer. Um, do you actually do this currently, yes or no? And if you say no, you will automatically be presented with this uh, information because if you're not doing it, you probably should be doing it. And uh, these text boxes really just give you a summary of the sorts of things you should be considering. So in this first question, which is about persistence identifiers, you can see then that you get some information on what persistent identifiers are and some of the different persistent identifiers that you might have with your data. So you get a, a kind of succinct introductory bit of information that moves you along your pathway to become more fair enabling in your practices. Uh, so it's meant to be quite high level information, practical, but high level um, enough to get people started. Uh, I think it's probably worth flagging at this point that once researchers have this little bit of additional information, they may then need to speak to somebody else at the institution, maybe a data steward or somebody who supports them in research data management. But it gives them that at least first step to know um, that they may not be doing something that they should be and to um, have an idea of some of the questions they might then want to discuss further with the uh, uh, research support staff. So I think if we can move on to the next question. Be great. I think the other thing that I just wanted to flag up is that the tool, in addition to getting you to thinking, uh, do I do this currently, yes or no? The other thing that the tool is really trying to um, help you to think through is, you know, what is the likelihood that you will do this? So we do ask people after they've answered the yes, no question, they get this sort of scale to um, hopefully reply fairly honestly about how likely they will be to um, adopt this practice. Uh, so I think it's, it's not just trying to understand what it means to be fair, but to try and get a sense about how willing you as a researcher are to take these steps and to make your research more fair um, in the future. So we encourage people to uh, fill out these, uh, these kind of scale questions and to do it in a fairly honest way, because the whole point is to try and, and really see what you're doing currently and where you might want to start to make some changes in your practice. So if we can go on to the next slide, please. Thank you. So this is just a, a screenshot of the end result. Once you go through your 10 questions, uh, there's a little bit of administrative information that you can also add um, as you go through. Um, you're presented with this fairly kind of high level score. Um, again, we're not looking for people to look at this as a kind of pass fail. It's, it's giving you some numbers based on the questions you're answering. But what we're trying to do is, is focus less on the numbers and more on the outcomes. So it gives you a, a sense of how aware you are of the in, uh, issues relating to making your data fair. Um, that's great, but I think the other thing that we're getting to see is your willingness to comply. And I think um, in some cases that's what we're seeing is, is slightly less <laughs> than the awareness. So some people may have heard about a lot of things to do with fair, but they're currently not doing it and maybe they're, they're not doing it for a reason that they don't know what to do or they really don't know how to make a start. So I think by getting that sense of both of these aspects, it hopefully then helps them to see where they can maybe start to reach out to other people at the institution to um, give them a bit more support. So what you can't see um, in this screenshot is that underneath this sort of high level numerical score, you get actually quite a long uh, narrative section as well, which helps you to understand where you might have scored a little bit less favorably and, and where you might want to start to make some, some improvements. So in addition to that kind of high level um, stuff, you also get a bit more of the uh, concrete and practical actions that you might want to think about taking forward. So that's uh, the outcome of the tool. And uh, it is very straightforward, human readable um, only <laughs> at this stage. Um, but that is essentially what the tool does in a nutshell. So if we can move on to the next slide. Uh, this is just, again, to say that the entire point of this two-day workshop is to get a sense of how you might start to be able to take some of these tools and to um, deconstruct them, play around with them, and reuse them in interesting ways. So the way we designed it to be used by a researcher in isolation and to run through the questions is just one of the ways it might be used. And we're really looking forward to hearing from you about other ideas that you might have about how this can be used more um, effectively in different, different ways. So over the next couple of days, if you're keen to look at our tool, uh, we're really excited to work with you and to hear about your ideas. And I think 
that is our last slide. So uh, if we have any questions, we'd be happy to take those. Thank you very much, Joy, and thanks, Linus. I think there was a one question. Um, okay, we have one more question. Lina censored one in the chat, but one more came in. Do you find that some groups of people react better to the tool than others? For example, do older, more experienced researchers not mind being graded on their willingness to comply? Mm, I, th I think, Linus, maybe you have more of an information about the, um, the current users. Um, but yeah. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, thank you very much for this question. Indeed, we're collecting feedback. So the tool has an implemented feedback collection mechanism. So we are on a regular basis collecting this feedback. So we have an idea of which uh, questions are difficult and uh, where some more awareness could be raised on which specific topics. We do not have information on the age. Like we don't collect information on demographics, unfortunately, but this is a very interesting point of point that you're addressing here. And they might integrate this in our feedback mechanism actually. Um, we could definitely um, include that potentially. And while you're still available, there's a second question. Uh, awareness is the first step, but there's some overhead to how to put these principles into research practice, how to convince that it's worth the cost. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, as I said in the, in, during the, the talk, I think a lot of this is just the first step. So if you get people to at least be aware of what they do know and where their knowledge may be, um, not quite as complete, then hopefully you get those discussions started. I think there is definitely a cost to doing a lot of research data management and making your data fair. And many research data management teams are working to try and help people to make sure that those costs are factored into grant applications. Um, so I think, you know, we would hope that people could start to run through some of these questions before they put together grant applications and maybe start to think about you know, whether there might be costs associated with each of the activities. So that, that might be something that we could build into the tool a little bit more explicitly going forward. But yeah, I think your point is, is very worth bearing in mind. We have two comments, one from Jane and one from Paula. One of the demographics could be length of time as a researcher versus age of respondents. So that's one of the comments. And another one related to the cost, I'm looking for training to a bit fair into the research process from the start. Infrastructure, something from small scale individual research projects. And I guess uh, the question is, do you have any suggestions? I, am, I think the key thing we've always suggested as being a useful tool for, for research data management costs is the data management plan. Um, many institutions require researchers to do this, whether it's for funded activity or not. Um, so we would always say that's maybe a really useful tool to use to start to um, identify what has to happen and whether that can happen with the resources that are allocated at the institutional level or whether that has to be something that is costed in over and above the support uh, that an institution gives. Um, but I think, you know, the kinds of questions that we have in the FairAware tool, um, from my own perspective, I think there's potential to bring in some of those questions um, some of the more practically focused things uh, into the data management planning process and to, to try and make sure that we're getting that sort of um, practical information on what has to be done and what costs might need to be associated with it. Um, I think just one tool I, I will flag up to you um, is since we've got the UK Data Archive people on, on the call, um, they might be able to include a pointer, but they've got some really great costing tools um, and checklists that also help you to think about the cost at the um, earliest stages of the research versus what happens if you're trying to um, do this work retrospectively. So I would recommend some of those tools as well as a starting point. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joy and Linus. Thanks for all the questions and the answers. That's uh, uh, that was very interesting. And uh, without 